It's a growing problem here in Connecticut. People dealing with the high cost of caring for elderly family members. It is busting a lot of family budgets in our state right now. News 8's Jason Newton joins us live in studio to break down how one lawmaker is looking to bring in some help for those in need. Jason? Darren, the population is living longer and costly diseases like Alzheimer's can drain a family's resources in a person's final years with no safety net from the government. Statistics show one in six adults in Connecticut are already serving as caregivers and the population continues to age. The problems are immense and when you talk to people and you find that they're alone or they're in tears on the telephone, uh, it breaks your heart. Joan Johnson is a retired school principal who now volunteers to work with the elderly. She learned how difficult it can be as she was the primary caregiver for her mother with Alzheimer's before she died four years ago. I was already older. I was already on Medicare and having my own health problems and it was a senior taking care of a senior. Unfortunately, her struggles are the norm. Most elderly people are cared for by close relatives who give up their own lives and lose out financially in the process to the tune of $470 billion each year in uncompensated care. So the Medicaid program now doesn't kick in until you've exhausted all of your income. So you get nothing or everything, and then it only pays for nursing home care. Connecticut is ranked as the seventh oldest state, and one out of every six adults is caring for a relative. Senator Chris Murphy co-sponsored the RAISE Act that would provide federal benefits like Social Security for caregivers, as caregivers often give up valuable working years to look after loved ones. The federal government has to wake up to the fact that there are lots of sons and daughters who are providing care for their elderly moms and dads, and they need supports to help them do that. Right now, they're not getting it. The RAISE Act has already passed the Senate. The U.S. House of Representatives will need to vote on it next. Live in the studio, Jason Newton, News 8.